We received a text on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline asking about growing knockout roses in containers. Here's the text. Hi, I love your Sunday show. I bought a double knockout rose bush and I'm planning to grow it in a container. I has no choice after the beautiful roses fell off the plant and produced a new batch of roses. They didn't look as full as the first roses. They had many petals and looked like real roses. Did I get fooled or I'm doing something wrong? Well, um, pruning. Don't fear the shears. Don't fear the shears. Here's a couple of things. Knockout roses look like real roses during certain times. And there's a single knockout and there's a double knockout. The single knockouts do not have as many petals as the double knockout. And you said you bought a double knockout. It is a time where they begin to open for about two weeks or so. Their flowers look like roses. Then when they start to mature and they open up fully, right before the petals drop, they look almost like the original knockout rose where it isn't as many petals and it's just the flower opening up my suggestion is anytime that your roses have finished flowering whether it's a knockout rose a hybrid tea rose or floribunda grandiflora that you want to prune them back to where the first or below the fifth cluster of leaves and what do, what do i mean by that i don't mean where there's you know coming out of the the stem five you know five different leaf nodules it's actually when they set their leaves out, and if you look close at a rose, that it'll be clusters from the top. It'll be maybe, say, three leaves on a little branch that comes out. You want to go and count it. There's three, there's four, and then below there's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's where I cut it. Below the fifth leaf, because that encourages blossom production, not uh, foliage production. And it probably would make your plant bloom more roses at one time rather than having it so that it's uh, here and there. That's blooming. You know, and that's why when it, we, we talk about the repeat blooming, uh, whether it's hydrangeas or the encore azaleas, that they're always the best show right out of the gate because they're all timed the same. And when you prune them, that's going to help their timing be together now there's good news there's good news growing knockout roses and containers or most roses to be honest uh is not going to be a problem that they've been growing in containers since they were babies they've never been put into the ground and into soil and then transplanted or dug up and then put into pots they've always been in a pot so you can do this but the one thing is is you have to remember to get a big enough pot so that it can live in there for a while. And you want to go basically twice the size of the of the root system so you give it lots of room to grow, and then it can stay there for a while. you got to make sure that it has good drainage holes. Yeah, that's so important. Right? Because uh-huh. if it's holding water, especially with roses, what do roses have? Roses have disease issues. And that... If you have good drainage, then you're getting that that water away from the plant. You're going to still have to treat it as if it was planted in the ground. And that means what, Julio? Spraying. Yeah, you got to make sure that, you know, um, you're you're feeding it. You got to make sure you're feeding it, right? And uh, you're taking care of it uh, with insecticide and uh, disease control and things like that in order to keep it going. Right. And and it's... It's really become easy where there's all, it's like all in one bottle. Like there's an insect control and disease control together. Sometimes there's even a fertilizer. Um, it comes in a granular form where you can sprinkle it on the soil and it absorbs into the root system and out towards the branches. Or you can use it as a spray. And that those, um, those control products work really, really well. And it will make caring for your roses so much easier. Uh, when you're planting, make sure that you're picking a, a good draining potting soil. Uh, Espoma ha- has some great soils, and you want to make sure that you've got it planted and tight. And, and also, don't bury it. You don't want to bury it. You want to make sure that that root 
is for the root ball, the very top of the container where the roots are, that that is level at the top, even slightly raised, then sinking it in the bottom and then putting two inches of soil on top of that because that would be bad for your plant. Uh, what else you got, Julio? Planting, where, where should they be planted? Yeah, you need uh, six to eight hours of light. So you got to make sure it's not you know less than that because you're not going to get many flowers. Yeah. So lighting is really important to, to have that knockout rose in that container where you have six to eight hours of sunlight. Right. And then just like we talked about in the previous segment, index finger probe. probe that's Make it. sure that you water it when it goes dry. Don't overwater it. Uh, the there, It's pretty amazing where the knockouts don't really need the kind of watering that maybe some other plants do, like a hydrangea, for instance. Hydrangeas love the like hydrangea hydro, you know, loves a lot of, of water. Where roses and knockout roses in particular do not need as much water as, like, say, your annuals do. And, and so water it when it needs it, develop a pattern, and go from there. Anything else to add, Julio? Yeah, we, we talked about fertilizing it, you know, with all in one. You know, it has a fertilizer in it with the disease control and, um, right. and fungus control. But, you know, you can also add water soluble to that. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 You know, Absolutely. Make sure you're, you're getting a, a beautiful flowering out of that. Right. And also the leaves will be greener. Right. It, it, if you do a water soluble fertilizer on, on your roses, it will look stunning because they'll have that green foliage with the, a good uh, flower production and that I mean every other week is what it's you want to do oh, yeah. and that it's it's one of those things it doesn't last very long you know it's like trying to like say for instance if you have a big meal you know you basically you know can can sustain that for you know for a long 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 yeah. time but if you go and you take a daily vitamin and it's not going to last that long to sustain you so it's not like you're getting the same nutrients out of you. you get a, a good boost from water soluble fertilizer in your plant just like you do by by taking a multivitamin it, it's important to do because your plants need it there there's it's in a different way that the plant absorbs it from the root system and that it's immediately available it doesn't have to break down over time with heat or or um, basically water as well but yeah. this is instantly available to your plant so if you have any plants that are kind of like looking peak it or just kind of you know yellowish, yellowish. side yep. try water soluble fertilizer and go ahead and start using that and by I would say by the third application your plant will be like brand back, new back again yeah brand new yeah 